here, one zero. <laughs> I love that clip. It's good. So, um, I love that he yells, you guys suck, right before the bomb blows up and kills him, and he loses the round. Um, so, uh, the combat in CS is, is similar and, and dissimilar to other kind of first-person shooting games. Uh, um, a lot of other games, you can take kind of numerous shots before you die. You can heal, you get power-ups, and these sorts of things. Um, whereas in CS, it, it can be extremely challenging for a new player. One bullet uh, can end your round. You can sit there for the next few minutes, um, you know, hitting your head against the desk while you wait for the game to play out. So, but as I said, the model's proved extremely popular. Uh, Twelve years since the game's release, still has hundreds of thousands of regular players in, in North America and Europe. Um, and overseas, it's proved equally successful. Um, in China, CS is one of the staples of the online gaming market, um, and you can find someone playing it in pretty much every internet cafe. Um, in late 2008, uh, in China, a modified version of CS was put out by Nexon, uh, called Counter-Strike Online. And uh, actually, Nexon's chief marketing officer will be giving a presentation uh, tomorrow uh, about um, at the uh, David Brower Center. Um, so I'm very interested in listening to what he has to say about the features of this rapidly growing uh, game market in, in China, which CS Online is, is one part. So, uh, what sorts of things are people doing when they're, when they're playing CS other than yelling at each other? Um, as an online game, what's important for me is that they're playing with other people. Um, sometimes for a minute, sometimes for hours, sometimes for 24 hours if, they, if they're really gung-ho. Um, now, they might know the people they're playing with, they might not. They might be friends they brought into the game. They might be people they've met um, in the game and become good friends with. Um, often, it's, it's a mixture of both of these. Um, and it's, it's these sorts of relationships that are really interesting to us as uh, anthropologists. Um, anthropologists and other social scientists argue you know, that once people start getting together in these online spaces, that you see really interesting, productive activities occurring, both Productive both in terms of economics, that there's people generating revenue, creating economies um, inside online games that have an impact in the real world, as well as, as being socially productive and, and producing social capital um, that um, players can draw into and enrich their own lives in, in, in all sorts of different ways. So I began uh, really looking into the social relations in, in, in CS uh, a couple years after the earthquake off the coast of Taiwan. Um, and when I was, I was conducting research in the nature of trust in, in, in online spaces, and the, at the time I was playing with this idea that CS, playing in CS is kind of like military context or high stress business context where you, you throw strangers into, into situations where they have to make very rapid decisions. Um, and what was happening in CS, I argued, was that while strangers might play together once off and, and never talk to, uh, to, to the other person ever again or never get to know them in any, in any way, it's the fact that strangers are thrown into, into collision in these stressful slash fun situations over and over and over again because of the speed of this game. And um, what happens is in these situations, it, it constantly demonstrates whether you're selfish or selfless, whether you're... Uh, collaborative or individualistic, you're calm or neurotic, highly skilled or average. Um, so in this way, CS can be considered a kind of daily drama in which strangers are thrown into social collision in a way that a classroom or, or, or this room right now normally doesn't. So the simple proposition that arose from this earlier research then is that the speed of play is one of the drivers that brings people together uh, in CS. And so the next question of interest became then, uh, what is it that brings certain groups of people together. Why are certain groups of people coming together uh, uh, on per in particular servers as opposed to others? Now, we have decades of social science research uh, about the interactions uh, between strangers and how they're mediated by this whole host of linguistic and uh, class and ethnic uh, mediators. Um, so, but you want to ask, is it, is it the same when you get online? Is it just a, a, a duplication of these, uh, of these offline uh, mediators happening uh, on the internet. And so to answer this question, in CS we need, I think, to start at the beginning. And the beginning is who can play together? Very simple question. Who can play this game together? Um, and we do this by looking at the sites where the social relationships are born. And these are, these are game servers. And game servers are just simply computers that are running the game 
um, in, in a, on in a continual basis so that if you leave, you can come back the next day. The game server is still going to be there. It's going to have the same name, and you might bump into the, to the same people if, if it happens. So um, understanding what brings players to one server over another, I believe, is, is crucial to telling us about the, the social topographies of online games. So I believe that, once again, speed is important here, looking at, at the element of speed. And so I'll begin by making a very simple proposition that uh, most people play games, not all, but most people playing games like CS, uh, where there isn't this uh, kind of, ah, oh, that's not important. Anyways, most people are playing CS or doing because it's fun in, in some sense. It's really simple. They enjoy it. Um, um, so the question becomes, what, what are people judging their, their fun by? And um, understanding what impacts on people doing better or worse in, in a game is very important, understanding who plays it and why, and why they're playing it. So. Um, I suggest that one of the simplest ways to do this is to look at the sorts of information, the sorts of feedback that players are given in game. So uh, here's a screenshot from, from CS that I just found on the internet uh, the other day. I wanted to get a new one. Um, I think it's new. Anyways, um, so you can see here, this, when you press the tab key in CS, you get this. It's very simple. It's your scoreboard. It tells you the names of all the players, if they're dead or alive, their score and their death and their latency. And uh, so you can see here, the number one is No Such Sivar. We've got some other people in here. Satan, apparently, is playing. And the knight who says knee as well. So there's a Monty Python fan in there. Um, so uh, number one here, you can see the guy who put the screenshot on the internet, because he's probably proud of himself, is No Such Sivar is 43 kills and 9 deaths. So there's that one other column, though, latency. and and. I begin to ask, why, why is it that latency is put up as one of the, the, the very little information that you're given in CS? And latency refers to the amount of time it takes for data to get sent from your computer. So when you click your mouse, the amount of time it gets sent from your computer to the game server and back to your computer. Um, and it's measured in milliseconds. So no such CVAR as a ping of 33 milliseconds. So that's one thirty-third of a second was the amount of time that it took for, for his data to get sent back and forth. And the highest ping is Secure Ops Leaves, who has a 130, 133 millisecond ping, which is one tenth, a little over one tenth of a second. So um, these are very minute periods of time that pass very quickly. And for most, human ex uh, most of human experience, these, these brief periods of time have no meaning, really, in, in our lives. They, they, they pass so quickly. Um, but what does it mean in, in online gaming environments? Why is it there? Um, so this is data from, from the early 2000s, taken from Quake, actually, and, uh, which is a bit of an older game and kind of passed on. But, um, and it maps out median ping uh, against frags per minute. And uh, the guy did it by setting up a server near in, in Palo Alto and one in London uh, so he could get a kind of a, a nice spectrum of users and then maps, yeah, their ping against their kills. So, uh, although the pings here are, are much higher than you experience these days because the net wasn't quite so well developed, uh, even if you take the chunk of, uh, of that we're dealing with, which is zero to about 150, there's still a very significant difference over time. Um, a person with 50 ping, 50 milliseconds, and a person with 150 can uh, get as, as little as 22 fewer kills in, 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 this graph over in this graph over 30 minutes, which is a very significant qualitative difference in, in, in your experience of play. Um, and more so than just getting kills and running around and, 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 and whatnot, um, there's also a, a whole set of other social, a whole set of other social acts in games that depend very crucially on, 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 uh, on speed, on being able to react very quickly. And this involves things like throwing grenades or, or someone comes around the corner twitching your hand, um, or in competitive play, um, carrying out very detailed strategies like we saw them trying to do in that, in that video. So now, these are the sorts of practices I say that uh, are dependent on milliseconds that build the sort of trust that I was, that I was talking about earlier. Um, and I think fundamentally underpins the whole social topography of games like CS. Um, so let's uh, take an example. Uh, so I have my first example is from the Great White North, and that's Canada, uh, called the New Brunswick CS Server. And it was started in 2004, and it takes its name from the province where its founding members are from. The server itself, however, is rented out of Toronto, where there's a, a much bigger market for server rentals. And um, 
yeah, some people play casually, some people play, uh, have been playing there for five or six years and have met really, um, have met really good friends online and develop relationships that have carried over in, into their uh, offline life. So, um, 